Hey Slicers, Brian from Palo Alto. Coming this spring from Apple, the latest advancement in touch technology, the iMerkin. Covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. Warning, effects of time shifting may occur. This is Dr. Michio Kaku. I'm Peter Mayhew. This is Trisha Helfer, number six from Battlestar Galactica. Hi, this is Colin Ferguson with Sci-Fi Channel Eureka, and you're listening to Slice of Sci-Fi. SliceofSciFi.com Figuring this show out on the fly, I'm Michael Arman K. I'm just along for the ride. I'm Brian Brown. I'm Sam Roberts. I once was a listener like you, then I took an arrow to the knee. I'm Tim Adamek. <laughs> and I'm Megan Sear. Yes, indeed. Wow. It is the listener feedback show. This is the time when we comment on your comments. And you can contribute to these comments by calling the numbers 206-339-TREK. That's 206-339-8735, or you can just send me something really cool, like what you heard at the beginning there, by emailing me, mike at sliceofsci-fi.com. Ding! Now, wait no, a minute. Yeah, that's an, right. An eye merkin? Isn't uh-huh. like a, the uh, Sauron-shaped merkin, right? Uh, right. Uh, yes. I think it means lowercase eye. Oh, oh lowercase yeah. eye. Yeah. Okay. Eyeball that's right. eye, because yeah. that's creepy. Yeah, it would be creepy, wouldn't it be? Oh. Wow, I, that, I see you. I see you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Apps or something. Oh. Nigel, this is Sean. I don't know why you are using that time shifting comp device. I told you it's set to read only and it's only set to read only from the past. <laughs> How you're receiving from the future? Some of that went in this with some settings. But no, next time I'm out there, I'm going to have to take a look at that. Yeah, you probably better. <sighs> Trust me, you don't want to listen to too much stuff from the future. Well adjusted Joe is kind of interesting to listen to. No, he's terrifying. Not. It's terrifying. You actually. really don't want to listen to some of the other craziness that happens in the future. I've got archives that will scare you. What? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you you know way too much, Sean. Wait, mm-hmm. the fact that he is the keeper of things in the future scares also me right terrifying. there. Yeah. Terrifying, yeah. right there. <laughs> frightening, frightening yeah. thing. Whew. Hey, Slashers, it's the captain. What was so great about the Chuck season finale? Mm, Where to okay. begin? Thank you. I like the nostalgia factor. Uh, it was very well done. Mm-hmm. Uh, not too gratuitous. I thought the storyline was very well written. I, I also like the fact that uh, there were plenty of op- opportunities for the Hollywood ending. They kept setting it up and then veering you off from that. Yes. Uh, Jester. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jester. It, it was just all the little, the little things that really made the show that they just kept them all in there and kind of gave them a little bit of a highlight. Overall, I was very well done, and uh, you never know. I, th- I think the ending left it open where you can just create your own adventure. Yeah, I would agree with that. I yeah. Do we have more chimes in about the... Uh, sh- the a couple of them here and there, but uh, yeah, it, it, I, I still have yet to see oh. it. I need to... Uh, i got to get caught Do you want to give on it one now. more week, and then we'll really chime in, or do you want to start chiming in now? I just will start chiming in now, as yeah, long I say as so. most of them are you know, not... Huge spoilerific, right? Right. You know, if they don't if turn around and go, yeah, well, you know, in scene four, when so and so drops the uh, drops trow, uh, when no. so and so dies, no, yeah. we won't. We won't <laughs> um, you know, I I thought it was an, an okay, Wash. yeah, oh, dollars. Man. And it was I thought all a it was dream a, I thought it was an okay wrap up. It wasn't, I don't think, spectacular for an ending. It seemed to not really go out on a super high note. I didn't think it ran out of a very mediocre note. It wasn't yeah? like. Yeah, it wasn't like, I mean, it was nicely bittersweet, mm-hmm. um, and it wasn't very Hollywood, but I don't think it was definitely like a, a wow, that was an awesome season, you know, a series ender. I, I mean, it was mm. for me, because I enjoyed the Jeffster moments so well, much. Well, so did I. I enjoyed the little interstitial parts of it, yeah. and that's what I enjoyed more than the main gist of the story, and the, and the gist of the story was pretty, you know, trite at this point. You know, it's like, oh, I, I didn't see that coming. And I did though. That's the point. I wasn't yeah. wasn't really super anything super surprising out of it. Well, that. I think it went out on the relationship note, which that you know was kind of the Came core of the as, series. Right. You know what right. I mean? And and so I think that was the right way to end it. I thought the little things they did with um, Ellie and Awesome and with Jeffster and the German guy. That was so so it's a funny we're, part. We're so like you're telling me good. then that the uh, the the series didn't end with him at recall in the implant chair and uh, no. waking up. <laughs> right. No, really? No. 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 Damn. Hey guys, this is Hickerson. I was calling wow. about the Chuck series finale. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like this Chuck series finale, but I don't think it was quite as strong as some of the other potential series finale that Chuck has faced. <laughs> I end agree. Of season two was a lot stronger as a series finale, and maybe even the midpoint and end of season three were a better series finale. 
but I'm still happy that huh. Chuck got to go out on yeah. his own terms and finish telling the story. And I'm overall satisfied with it. Uh, I'm interested to hear why everyone wasn't satisfied with it, and maybe I'll respond there, or we'll start a discussion on the Slice of Sci-Fi webpage, which everyone should be visiting at least five times a day. <laughs> at <laughs> least five times a day. Way to go, Hickerson. All right, way to go, Hickerson. I, I would agree with that. I think I think the 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 you know the original season finale, which was season two, mm-hmm. when they thought they weren't going to get picked up or anything, was was really good and solid, and I think it was a good I way to go. I honestly don't even remember what it was. Um, go back and watch it again okay. and see. But you know, it seemed like it was much more satisfying, or at least um, different than. I mean, this was a very nice wrap up. It was, it was, but it wasn't like I said. It wasn't a, a high note to go I off on. It I was don't very, see why shows have to go out with a bang. Like I think I thought the tone was emotionally appropriate, and that there was enough humor and enough nostalgic nods. And you know what? It, it it actually sounds like to me. It sounds like the show, and I haven't seen it yet. Right. It sounds like your feelings about the show and the reason that you like it is it has that sentimentality of a clip show. But they did it without the clips. Mm. But they kind of did. A little bit, yeah. They kind of did. That was my kind of disappointment, and I think it was because it was kind really? of a clip show. Really? Yeah, I it think w- so. It was in some pretty precise ways. Like, yes. they revisited some sets, and, and but in funny ways, I thought that it was enough. But it wasn't sitting back and going, everybody having a you know a, a glass of whiskey and going, no. oh, you remember that time? No. We no. Well, somebody on trial minutes. and therefore having to recount all that. Exactly. Yeah, none of those shenanigans. So so cl- the clip portion was going back to uh, where Chuck bombed the thing out and seeing the crater or something uh, like the that. The clip portion was seeing Sarah in her wienerlicious outfit again. Outstanding. And, uh, yeah. You know, okay. cool stuff like that. Flashbacks of seeing Chuck with his, with his old hair style and everything. And I mean, but it was, it definitely had that clip show feel to it to me. So, that it was, was, so basically it wasn't the end of Stargate. No. no. <laughs> the, the, dude, the end of, uh, of, of SGU. SGU was... Yes. <laughs> no, that's not, true. Not, not even close. Uh, no, SG1 is what I'm talking oh, about. No. Oh, no. That God, uh, oh, yeah. That, that clip one, around, uh, Remember no. the clip yes, yes. thing that was the end of SG1? Oh, wow. No. <laughs> yes. no, this was much b- miles away from the Still difference. good, but I, I get I get your critiques yeah. about it. Hey, Slicer Shop from Edwards. You know, I think so far the new show that I picked up this year that I'm enjoying the most is. Strangely enough, Once Upon a Time. Really? Yeah. I didn't think I would like it that much. I'm actually really enjoying it. It's pretty well written. The characters are believable and interesting. You know, it had some hiccups. But I'm really liking how they're kind of reimagining some of the uh, fairy tales. And God dang it, the Queen Regina Mm -hmm. is not just playing up some of the best Xanatos gambits I've seen on TV in a long time. (laughs) I don't know who... Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a really awesome show. I can't wait to see more and just see how where they're going to go with this and especially that's, how they're going to make it last more than one season that's yeah. my thing about it yeah, i don't yeah. i don't see the legs on it do you guys no i don't mm. really worry about those things when i'm yeah, watching a show true. though like i will say i like it but i have i have very little attachment to any of the characters mostly right. i'm mostly interested in rumpelstiltskin mr gold mm-hmm. um but uh, so it's not the first thing i go to you know what i mean it was kind of like when i first started watching fringe and didn't care about anybody right, i right. had to get to know people and i haven't quite gotten there yet with once upon a time although yeah. i still watch it i still enjoy it I love the evil queen outfits in Fairy Tale Land. I want some of that stuff. Are you watching it, Meg? I am. I don't think the characters are as well developed as he's saying. They're all kind of boring, except for Mr. Gold mm-hmm. Ruffle Stiltskin. I'm kind of inter- interested to see where the queen goes. Yeah. Because yeah. she's been very over the top, but she's still very interesting. So I'm waiting to see how her whole backstory goes on. Yeah. But otherwise, all the characters are kind of bland, I think, actually. Uh, Jiminy, uh, Jiminy was probably oh, Jiminy. One, was one. The, oh, and the mirror. Yeah. Some of the some of the uh, side characters are much more interesting, I yeah, think. And I like how it kind of goes a Disney route with it. Because yes. you have Jiminy Cricket. You mm-hmm. have the um, uh, the mirror guy who mirror. turns out yeah. to be the genie. Yeah. yeah. Right. I do know we're going to get the backstory on Grumpy soon, and, and we're going to get which to see yeah, a- and Amy, Red. Amy Acker nice. as his girlfriend, which will be fun. Oh, yeah. So awesome. I, some of the peripherals, I'm, but again, I don't. Not, I don't care about the daughter. What's her face? Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't think I of her, can't name. Remember her name. I can't even think of her name. I always think of her as Cameron from House. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> the house lady, uh, yeah. Snow White, and the prince. I could care less if they get together. Yeah, yeah. exactly. The it's, kid, I want to die. It, yeah. It, yeah, really. It's Like I said, it's the side characters that are more mm-hmm. interesting than anything else. So. Hey, Slice of Sean from Edwards. Can please, God, somebody explain to me this whole brony thing? I mean, okay. I'm a horse owner, and even oh, dear God. I don't get wow. why suddenly all these well, yeah. seemingly rational adults are obsessed with my little pony on every single <laughs> message board I go to. Well, oh, dear even God. the aviation message board, I see these brony things popping up. I don't, I don't know Please, what he's talking God, about. Please, Tom, explain this um, to me. Uh, I mean, uh, the only reason that... 
Let us enlighten you. Grown adult men especially should be interested in horses for the same reason I am. To survive the upcoming apocalypses. They zombies. (laughs) And you're going to need a My Little Pony for that. have a nice way of getting around. Uh, something more without. Yeah, you, okay. do you want to explain no, this? No, I Tim, bow, I bow to, I'll let Tim let's do Let's bow it. to Tim. Uh, it it's is, kind it's of more frightening. Of a, so it, it's there's two components right. to it. it. It has become a meme. Yes. <laughs> um, it started out with the new My Little Pony Adventures, <laughs> and a lot of guys watching them and going, "Oh my God, they're really good stories. I really enjoy this. I really enjoy that." Correct. Which is just disturbing it's in just its own. A, yeah, it's just kind of disturbing. And but then, it happens. Come on. It, it does. Do you remember the time? Have you ever sat down and actually got into a soap opera at, at one point oh, in your life? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's the same absolutely. kind of thing. I can't Laura, judge on that Luke score. and Laura, absolutely. I was <laughs> there on board. You bet. Okay. Yes. Good. So, I mean, that's kind of it, right? I mean. That, that's that's one pretty much side. where it started. And right. then, of course, people started noticing that it was going on. And like most of these memes happened, 4chan grabbed it. Oh, mm. yes. And just ran to town. Yes. <laughs> and so it's done, used in a very ironic sort of yeah. way. Yeah. Yes. Now I'm understanding. Yes. It's, mm-hmm. it, it's a lot like the, uh, the the rabbit with the pancake on its head thing that went around for a few years. Yeah, yeah except was, as, as the... <laughs> but that was more an inside IT thing than it was really But when 4chan gets a hold of something. Yeah, yeah. it turns yeah. it into a meme. And, I, you know, that whole thing I opened the show with, the, the arrow with the knee, if you're not paying, playing Skyrim, you have no idea what it's about. <laughs> yeah. So, Know Your Meme is a great site, folks. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, there you are. Hey, Slicers. Rinse one here. Am I the only one who finds it odd that Sean from Team Edward never really seems to talk about Twilight much? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Very nice. That's excellent. Oh, that is so awesome. <laughs> it is, and that's a good place to take a break. <laughs> the Adventures of Sweetleaf. Sweetleaf, my boy. Come in. Come in. It's good to see you. Hey, Doc. What's wrong? Your wings are almost dragging the ground. Cleverbell ain't talking to me. Ah, uh, let me make you a cup of tea. Then we can talk about your woman troubles. What's this gizmo, Doc? Looks like you wired your iPod up to an inside-out turntable. And what's this? A flux capacitor? Ah, uh, yes. That's my newest invention. An interpotentimensional matter transporter. Maybe you could give me a hand. I need to run a little test. Sure, Doc. What do you want me to do? Okay, just stand up here. On the DVD? Yes. Now, Sweetleaf, I'm going to activate the interpotentimensional matter transporter, and I want you to take note of where and when you are. Then I'll bring you back here and now. Then I can calibrate the controls with the information you bring me. I don't know about this. Are you sure this thing is safe? Wait, Doc. Not- that should be time enough for Sweetleaf to have gathered the information I need. I'll just reverse the polarity and... Oh, goodness. I think I've lost him in the space-time continuum. Who's gonna punch the junk? Crazy Joe is. Who's that that punched your junk? Crazy Joe did. Punch him in the junk. Yeah. Kick him in the butts. Punch, 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 punch. That's a lot of nuts. Hi, this is Crazy Joe, and this is a brand new Punch in the Junk. I am punching DC Comics in the junk. DC Comics has decided to change the name of the character Captain Marvel to Shazam. The character has already been published under the name Shazam because Marvel Comics owns the rights to the name Captain Marvel. But now they're actually going to change the character's name to Shazam. Okay, if you don't own the character's name, it makes sense that you'd want to change it to something you do own. But here's why you can't name the character Shazam. That's also the magic word he uses to turn back and forth from 12-year-old Billy Batson into the superhero. So if you name the character Shazam, he can no longer say his own name. You have a character who can't introduce himself to people. You have a character who can't give interviews to the press. If he saved an airplane, how would the press even know to report on it and say, Shazam saved the airplane? They wouldn't know his name because anytime Lois Lane or another reporter tried to say, hey, thanks for saving that plane, what's your name? He'd have to say, I can't tell you because as soon as I tell you, I'm going to turn into a 12-year-old kid. Look, DC Comics, changing the character's name makes total sense. You don't own Captain Marvel, change it to something else. 
but you can't use Shazam. It doesn't make any sense. You're going to have him turning into a 12-year-old kid anytime he inter- makes an introduction to somebody. This is stupid. You've been punched in the junk. Reactor leak detected. Hey, Slicers. This is Arkel's father, but not for very much longer. You see, Arkel, the ungrateful little shit that he is, <laughs> wants me to get a new handle. Wow. He feels I've been riding on his coattails. Wow. <laughs> so if you and the listeners really? want to suggest names for me, I'm open to suggestions. The suggestion I like, I'll probably pick and make that person a character in the novel I'm writing. Wow, Arkel, you bastard. Wow. What's up with that? Jeez. Aren't, aren't you Grateful. the dad? Can't you tell him, no, I'm the authority figure? Tell him, right. I, tell him I brought you into this world. Uh-huh. I'll make another one <laughs> just like you. Uh-huh. That's right. I think perhaps your name should be The Adopter. <laughs> 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 the adopter. Wow. Oh, there you go, Mr. Banks. How about the artist formerly known as Arkel Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was going to say, that joke never gets old. Yeah. No, it doesn't. One. It doesn't. Oh, man, I don't know. That's a good one. Uh, there you go, folks. Chime mm-hmm. in. Let Arkel's dad know his new um, handle. 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 Yeah. Hey, guys. The Baron Geek. So, Lucas is during... Ripping off Godfather for this series. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why is it that the one image that comes into my head is um, seeing some seedy senator lying in bed, waking up, and finding a tauntaun's head on one side of him and a bantha's on the other? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the head of Jar Jar Binks would be awesome. Ooh, Jar Jar I'd be into Binks. that. Jar yeah. Jar sleeps with the fishes. It- he, he lives underwater. Does. He does live yeah. sleep with the fishes. No, no, he sleeps with the fishes. No, he's really he, underwater. Jar Jar he's flies sleep. with the birds. <laughs> there you, there go. you go. Hey, Fighter Shane from New Jersey. Uh, my wife and I saw Chronicle over the weekend. Ooh, yeah? Really, really enjoyed it. Oh, um, wow. The only thing I thought that could have made it better is the, uh, the, the way that they filmed it. It's basically uh, the, the actor, the stars carrying around video cameras mm-hmm. and like documenting oh. as their lives mm-hmm. go on kind of yeah, like it's a documentary reality style. thing. Vomit cam. And they gain superpowers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, the only thing I thought would have made it better was if they had just foregone that whole shaky cam type scenario yeah. and just uh, filmed it like a regular movie. Um, Isn't that the shtick though? I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I thought it was very well done. And uh, I would love to see more of that kind of thing in the future. It gives me uh, hope for Akira if it ever yeah. uh, gets mm. on screen. Really? So um, that shaky cam helps with low budget, right? It was a $12 million movie that um, won box office Super Bowl weekend, which is traditionally a low movie weekend yes. anyway. So that thing immediately made its money back and more. And is just it's kind of a, a surprise success. Hmm. Hmm. Nice. Hey, Slicers. Brian from Palo Alto again. Just a quick note on Myth TV. While yes. I've certainly heard it can be a pain to set up high definition capture with cable boxes because the cable companies lock them down like uh, whatever you want it's really easy for over the air which is all i've got so i miss out on a lot of that cable stuff but well dvds come in for that thanks bye okay well, where is he my god there's <laughs> planes noise. flying there's a carnival in the background where are you it's dude Palo Alto. he's probably near the airport <laughs> i was gonna say it's it's an air show come on yeah, it's gotta be yeah. no but it, it, to his point though it's actually a lot easier to set up high def than uh, now than it was before especially with some of the new hdmi capture cards and the uh, composite capture or uh, component capture cards that you can get Back when I was running it, I mean, it back, was, in, my it, back day. in my day, yeah, you, you <laughs> couldn't do it. It was a twenty-five thousand dollar piece of equipment to actually capture one high def stream. Wow! So with a, with a cable box and an infrared thing, you can actually do the switching and everything you need to do now. Hmm. Hey, Slazers, it's Brian from Palo Alto. So, are you sure it's Transformers Four they're filming out there at Edwards? Uh. From the sound of uh, Sean this week, it sounds more like he's uh, understudying for Bane. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hey, it's Sean from Team Edward. Uh... <laughs> hey, Slicers, Rents one here. While driving home from work yesterday, I heard something on the radio that got my attention. Apparently, William Shatner has a one-man show that's going to be traveling around yes. the country oh, yes. in March. And I was wondering if you knew anything about it or heard anything regarding whether it would be worth I've, seeing. I've heard it's awesome. I but... only know that it's made of awesome because it's yeah. Shatner in yeah. a one-man show. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> this is not the first time he's done this. He's he did the first one man show a while back. I don't know if it's the same thing, yeah, but he did a one man thing 
once. He needs to do his One Man Julius Caesar musical like in um, yes. that movie. Mm. Actually, you know, if he could just go perform the spoken word Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> wow. I want to see him tour with Henry Rollins because he did that song I love so much. Thing. Yeah. Hey, Slicers, it's Will, a.k.a. Fan Fantasy, in New York, and I was not at the con this past weekend. So I hope this is a Impossible. listener feedback and not a con report. Uh, but it's a response to some of your comments on my Confusion con report. There is a script for the Rocky Horror Muppet Show online, and I'll email oh, that yeah, yeah, to yeah. my we got that email. in the show notes if he likes. It's by a uh, Midwestern area filter named Tom Smith, who's a very funny man and who Mike should remember for doing some of the Babylon 5 stuff. Mm. Uh, beyond that, I had a long day at work today because I'm off to one more this weekend. Capricorn in Chicago. Really wow, looking forward wow. to it. You're crazy. Uh, but there will be video of Rocky Horror Muppet Show eventually. Tom actually has the video that someone shot of the performance. It was staged reading. It wasn't like full. It wasn't full costume. More to the better. Oh, okay. uh, but it was a lot of fun, and you seem to do a great uh, sort of stage, not stage dive, floor dive, sort of like I've been hit, collapsed onto the floor. They were actually worried for a second. Um, but anyway, more on Capricorn as it develops, and thanks for playing all my reports. It's been nice to hear my own voice. I tell you, we've got one <laughs> coming up uh, in tomorrow, yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, or in two days. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, awesome. Thank you so much for sending them in. Uh, glad yeah. you had a week off. We're a week behind. That's why these are kind of out of order. Yep. But uh, uh, yeah, we'll have one this week, and then I'm sure we'll have one from Capricorn as well. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hey, Slicers, it's Taz from D.C. So a couple of quick things. First of all, thank you guys so much for letting us know that you were on Roku. But could you be a little more specific about where and how we find you? It took me quite a bit of searching to find you on both Uh, TV. Um, But I do like watching you guys on TV as well as listening to you on my my daily commute. The other thing is you mentioned in your last Life of Sci-Fi show, 409, uh, all the people behind the scenes that uh, help produce the show. Why not give them a credit? I don't see them anywhere on the website. And I don't necessarily, I mean, we all know Summer's there because she's been there from the beginning. But if there really are a cast of thousands, where are your credits? Give these guys some credit. Mm. Let us give them some credit and say thanks to them for putting it all together. We thanks, want all the glory. Bye. It's all about us. That's right. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Brian's big giant ego must be fed. <laughs> oh, yes. Huge. It's my huge ego. <laughs> <laughs> there actually are credits at the end of the uh, video. At the end of there the video. Are? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, there are. Okay. And, and there and are video. And the credits have are we added, actually. Have we added Manny to them because he's new? I'm still working on it. Okay. And we have got credits on our blip page as well. Mm-hmm. So, yes. And uh, there are no credits on YouTube yet. But yeah. there. They're out there. If they find them, we need to we slice need to be a little bit. Needs to needs yeah, to we be yeah. Yeah. Have it about yeah. We got to do. We get, we need to do some tweaking to uh, slice.com. Yeah, Absolutely. and then and then rewind to our first question. Hard to find on Roku. Uh, yeah. it, because it's under Blip, you have to look at Blip and then find us through the Blip through the Blip app on, there. on Roku. And okay. that's whether you're on Blip or on Sony, because we're on we're on the Blip, we're on Sony, we're on the. Oh. I think Google TV has us. I, we're on everything. I mean, we're on all of them except for TiVo because they hate us. I don't that's know why. Disappointing to me. That's uh, the only no. only platform that we are not on is TiVo. Curse you, TiVo. I know. I love you, TiVo. I do. <laughs> hey, Slicers, it's Arkel listening to the last voicemail show. Uh, you had a caller call in and uh, mentioning, uh, you know, George Lucas uh, drawing inspiration from uh, The Godfather for his new Star Wars series. Wow. Okay, he's really just approving the funding for that thing. I think Rick McCallum is yeah, going to be doing really all the legwork on that, which no, give me Lucas. a teeny, <laughs> weeny, tiny, microscopic iota of hope for it. Oh, no. But, um, no. The point was the point of this call is uh, I think one? it just goes to show you what kind of geek I am. That when he said Full Metal Gungan, the first thing I thought of was not Full Metal Jacket, but Full Metal no, no, Alchemist. Alchemist. <laughs> yeah. I hate to say it, Arkel, but you talk and all I hear is I'm mean to my dad. Yeah, me too. <laughs> That's what I hear too. I hate my father. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I know. Yeah, daddy He's issues definitely. Daddy mm-hmm. issues. Maybe we should call him Arkel's father's son. <gasps> there we go. Oh, oh I like there we go. That. Hey, Slicers, it's Arkel, listening to the Last Listener Feedback Show. Dad hater. Mike, just want to let you know, I got you back on the uh, Neil Yovovich thing. You know, we've all got our celebrity crushes here. I mean, you guys know about me and my little uh, Evil LaRue thing going. I mean, come on, you guys don't think I watch CSI Miami for the stories, do you? (laughs) (laughs) Just for sunglasses. Yeah, I was going to say. Did you watch her on her soap opera? I did. All my children, even I did. Excellent. Mm. 
Um, I, a really quick aside, uh, that, that kind of reminded me of uh, Strike Back. Um, I'm actually been, I'm, I haven't I'm been watching really, this season. Yeah? really yeah. digging that show. Dang I've, it. I've gone through it now. Um, I'm not sure if they're if they started their second season yet or if they got another season going yet, but ah, uh, I'm, I'm digging that show. I, I've gone through, I know I've gone through all of them that have, were ran last yeah. season, so I think I don't know if second season, season is aired, but I know there's going to be if, the, if it hasn't already. Yeah. I, I think it's available on alternative means. Of course, it everything is yeah. available come through yes. this country originally, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, and just one more thing, Arkel. I went to high school with Evil Uru. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is Sandra, the truck driver. Oh, hey, uh, Sandra. So, 407, you were talking about hotels and conventions. Mm-hmm. Every year I go to the Romance Writers Convention, and oh. each time it's really? in a different city. Uh, yeah. One year we were in Reno at Circus Circus. Now, mm-hmm. that's an interesting hotel when you're walking through the casino oh, yeah. in costume. <laughs> Everybody loves to stare, especially when you're dressed up like a butterfly. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Nice. Awesome. I approve. Yeah. <laughs> Were you butterfly. a pretty butterfly? Of course. Of course. <laughs> All butterflies are pretty. You should know. Well, sure except the moth. ones that eat flesh. Even moths are pretty. I love butterflies. I have a butterfly purse. Zombie butterflies. butterflies. Yeah, flesh eating butterflies. Whatever. Right. They're pretty. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you they're really happy. pretty. They're, oh. It's eating my arm, but it's so pretty. <laughs> right? I don't care. Right? It's got to be an upside down. The blood makes it glow. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, neat. Hey, Flies, this is Mike from Moines. Frightening thought. Okay, I know somebody out there is either thinking about it or has already done it. Somewhere there is a Klingon version of Firefly. <laughs> wow. Please tell me I'm just delusional. Okay, I'm, I know I'm delusional, but tell me I'm wrong about this, please. <laughs> if there isn't, there should there be. There needs to be. There really needs to be. I hope so. <laughs> Has it been edited so the Alliance are the good guys? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow. I'm thinking crossing way too many streams here at yeah. some point. Yeah. That would be meta on meta <laughs> with meta, more meta. Yeah, of the side of meta, yeah. <laughs> Hey, Slicers, it's the captain. As to my handle, well, your first name's Kirk, and oh, you like science fiction. Uh, uh, yeah. All your friends don't give you much of a choice as to a nickname, true. so I just decided to own it. Fair enough. Perfect. Neil, the one I knew was a skinky little psycho wench that I would have nothing to do with. Might even been the inspiration for the Gorks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then. Wow. Wow. And that's going to do it for this voicemail this week. Wow. We, um, we're a little light. Yeah. Um, because all it was was, Chuck, I love Chuck. I didn't <laughs> like Chuck. I love Chuck. I didn't like Chuck. Okay, I love but Chuck. why? I need to hear more yeah, the, why, why not. And that was there it. There wasn't a lot of the why not. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of detail as to why you liked it or why you hated it. So yeah. next week, I'm putting the call out. Tell us why you liked it or why you hated it. Where so, the hell do they call? Yeah. That number is 206-339-TREK. That's 206-339-8735. Of course, you can find us everywhere. Also, and keep your voicemail under a minute, folks. That's yes. a good way to get in as well. Mm-hmm. Be concise. Yeah, there were a couple two-minute jobbers that went away Bye-bye. this week. You have to be super special to get two minutes. Sorry, Sam. You you were saying <laughs> no, ba- no, Miggy. No, it's Miggy. You you took my time. You took my time, Mike. <laughs> you took my time. No, You're blabbing again, Miggy. Go. You're blabbing go. again. I want to hear what people think of Alcatraz and Touch. Yes. We haven't had a lot of that. I want to hear yes, no, why, and I want people to look forward to Awake, which is scheduled for March 11th, and it's going to be awesome. I All right. predict. Yes. See? Like there us. You go. Like us on Facebook, folks. Please. And like us on Facebook. All right. Bye.